the answer to 1984 is 1776. I, you know, I had to get Lindsey Williams back on because we finally got up off of our rumpuses and uh, went uh, to the audio of the October 21st, 2010, now about five months ago, audio of uh, Pastor Lindsey Williams saying that uh, his now deceased oil company exec connection who died a few months after that and his other even bigger connection told him, yes, within six months, 150 to $200 a barrel. Uh, now we have Bloomberg, London Telegraph, and others reporting Saudi Arabia's day of rage lures record bets on $200 oil chart. And it says that the, uh, the, 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 the largest call contract options by New York crude for June delivery is at $200 a barrel. And uh, that is exactly what is uh, now uh, beginning to unfold. And this is what is, and remember, his old company exec sources have been right. And I'm, in the next segment, when everybody joins us, I'm going to go over some of the history of Lindsay's predictions briefly. And then, and then this new revelation of information, uh, where all of this is going. But the main reason we have Lindsay here today is to take your phone calls and, you know, to say, look, see, Lindsay told you so. I mean, I knew, uh, Ken Fromm was years ago. Couldn't tell you the name. He's dead now. We can. I know who the other guy is. Can't tell you who he is. And he's alive and well. And uh, what they're telling you is from what the insiders plan to do. And uh, it, it's just incredible. But, Lindsay, we're about to go to break and come back to the full audience. But I wish your sources were wrong. But uh, the key to this all, with them being proven right, shows, on top of all the other admissions of George Soros and NSA and CIA and Google and MI6 and SAS running these overthrows, it's a fact they're doing it. Doesn't mean these dictators are good. The point is, this is staged, but you said this five months ago on this show. You know, turn him on. We'll go to him. Uh, Lindsay, do we have you there? Yes, you're exactly right, Alex. You allowed me the privilege to be on your show. And I know both of us had our reputations at stake. And I said that they had told me that within four to five months there would be a conflict in the Middle East. They did not say Iran. They did not say Egypt. I knew it was going to happen, and then two weeks ago, I found out why it happened. And today, we know not only what all this is about, but what it's going to be about from this point on, Alex. Well, it's incredible. We're going to come back in a moment and, and, and basically recap the previous things they told you, just in, in brevity, as brief as we can. You know, three and a half years ago, it was fifty dollars a barrel. They said it'd go to one hundred and fifty. It did. Then the media said it would go to two hundred. You said no. Now it's going to go down to forty within the next two months. Did exactly that. You got laughed at. Then it happened. Uh, how quickly they forget. Then you said now enjoy yourself for the next two years. It'll only grow a little bit to sixty dollars a barrel or so. But then after that, look out. It's going to center in and around a flare up in the Middle East, and it's going to go up to one hundred and fifty or more. Then five months ago, they tell you, okay, here's the time frame. Six months from now, this will begin, $150, $200 a barrel. Now we see that happening. I mean, it just goes on and on, Lindsay, and we're going to come back, recap that, go over some of the news headlines, look at what dollar devaluation means, run through one segment with you. Then we're opening the phones up. Specific questions for Lindsay Williams. We don't screen your phone calls. But occasionally, maybe once a week, I have a guest on on a certain topic. If you call in about another website or the Easter Bunny or Vatican Assassins or Blood Drinking Lizards, I'm not going to take your, I'm going to hang up on you. I want to hear from you. I want to see the different directions you take us in. But I want to hear your questions for Lindsey Williams on what's happening on this front. For the rest of this hour, Lindsey Williams, proven right again, is our guest. But he's here today from the 20 after break to the end of the hour to take your phone calls. Toll-free number to join us, 800-259-9231. Now, let's briefly recap. Three and a half years ago, oil is at about $55, $60 a barrel. Lindsey Williams says it will go to 150 from his inside two oil company exec connections who are globalists known to us. Now one of them's dead. We can talk about him. Ken Fromm. Can't talk about Mr. L. Still alive. Oil then, everybody laughs at Lindsey. It then rockets to 149. Then it drops, starts dropping a little before that even happens. Lindsey says it will go down to 40. It doesn't just go to 40. It goes to 32 for a while. 
Then he says, enjoy yourselves. For two years, my sources say it's going to only move up just a little bit to 60 or so. Then there'll be destabilization in the Middle East. After two years, it will explode and go to 150 or more. Then on October 21st, 2010, five months ago on this broadcast, he broke the news that uh, Mr. Fromm, uh, very close to death, uh, and he did die a month and a half later, said that uh, the plan has been initiated for destabilization, not war in the Middle East, destabilization. That is not countries fighting each other, but civil war. You can go hear the old hour interview from that day. It's up on our YouTube channel. It's up on PrisonPlanet.tv as well. And, in fact, it's just Lindsey Williams' predictions on the Alex Jones Show, October 21st, 2010. And so Williams said... It's going to go up to 150. Then he said, now it's going to go down to 40. People laugh. Went down to 40. Now it's going to just slowly go up, but not above 60 or so for two years. Enjoy yourselves. Then after that, uh, uh, in the next six months, it's going to explode in the Middle East. Boom. It's happening. Now, what are the headlines today and yesterday? Saudi Arabia's day of rage lures record bets on $200 oil chart of the day uh, by June delivery. That would make it uh, six and a half, seven months from Lindsey Williams' uh, report to us. Right on time for $200 a barrel. Uh, continuing, uh, oil markets brace for Saudi rage as global uh, spare capacity wears thin. Talk of $150 to $200 a barrel. It's already over 8 bucks a gallon in Europe or a liter. Uh, continuing, oil already above 105 In the next month, the futures are between 114 and 122 uh, That's just some of the news. Uh, on that front. But before we go to Lindsey Williams, I want to play a clip from him here on the show. And this was on uh, October uh, uh, October 21st, 2010, on this radio broadcast, where Lindsey Williams laid out uh, this information. And they didn't know they didn't know I was going to it. Uh, OK, Lindsey, tell us about this clip. Uh, that's coming up here in a minute from you in October, what you were told by Mr. Fromm and others. I feel so honored that by the providence of God, I will be allowed to know these things in advance so that I could tell the American people what's happening. And if it had not been for those three years I lived with the elite of the world, I would not know it. But on this clip, and I said it on your show, and again, Alex, please allow me, I am not a prophet. I only tell what the elite have told me because of their trust in me 35 years ago when I was their chaplain for three years and lived with them. And they have said everything is going to take place before it happens because it's part of their uh, moral code that they must tell the world what they're going to do before they do it. And on your show, you were daring enough to allow me to say some things that could have ruined either one of our reputations. And I said that I had just been told by the elite of the world that within four to five months there would be a conflict in the Middle East. Now let's go back again because you've reiterated some of these and you were exactly right. I actually said it only because they had said it to me. Three years ago, they said the price of crude oil is going from $147 a barrel to $50 a barrel, a dollar and fifty cents a gallon at the gas pump. At the, and it happened three months after I said it on your show exactly. But before that, you predicted it would go to 150 and that was right, too. Yes, and then they said it will stay that. This, Alex, that nobody in the world can doubt this because I said it on your show two and a half years. I said that they told me it was going to stay between $70 and $80 a barrel, and it did exactly almost to the day. Then they said it's going to go back up to 150 to $200 a barrel, exactly as I was told. Folks, are you getting this date? And I recorded it in my book, The Energy and On Crisis, Exactly as I was told in 1947, when I watched the Gull Island field brought in. You mean 1977? Uh, 1977, I'm sorry. And they said the price of crude oil, we, we, we will get it to where we want it to go before we release any oil from the Arctic Wildlife Refuge. And now they're going to open that up. So, so, so this is all coming to pass. We do have the clip ready from you, October 21st. 
2010, five months ago, here on air. Here's Lindsey Williams. But it's back up with their crude oil prices. This means that their program is on schedule. They're doing exactly what they've been telling me over these years they were going to do. Here it is. Here's the price. Crude oil is going back to 152 $200 a barrel. Gasoline at the gas pump will be 4 to $5 a gallon. This is going to contrive massive inflation. Can you imagine what this is going to do to airline fares? With the airlines, I know they're making money right, right now. They're one of the most viable uh, businesses in America. Can you imagine what this is going to do to the truck and freight line prices? Can you imagine what this will do to the grocery store and the hardware store? Because every bit of it is hauled by either a diesel train or a truck right down the And now the Al Gores and others are back. positioned to roll out with their solution, the, quote, green economy that they control. Yes, and the, the, every bit of this is part of their total program of what they're going to do. Now, what Janet Napolitano said only moments ago on national news on a special bulletin that they are very concerned about a cyber attack. Do you realize what this would do to crude oil prices when you went to, for instance, you go to the service station and you can't use your credit card? Okay, folks, so it goes on for an hour, him talking about the Middle East flare-up, all of it. The date is uh, October 20 first of last year it's in our archives the free audio archives the higher quality prison planet tv it's on the alex jones channel it's all over the web if you want to go hear the hour-long interview where he lays it all out but but the, you know there it is uh, 150 200 dollars that's what they're telling him and then he goes on to say flare up in the middle east you can hear the whole hour-long program up on the site but there it is uh lindsey now we're seeing it all unfold like clockwork now the headlines are 150 to 200 dollars a barrel because you're inside oil company execs are running in the same group as the head of Shell and others now saying the exact same thing because they're covering a blueprint. No one could have ever possibly have known this without them telling it to you. I could not have guessed this even if I had tried. There's no way that a little insignificant guy sitting down here could possibly have ever conjured all of this up and been right every single time for 35 years. Now, this morning in Europe, Gasoline, right now, while we're speaking on the air, gasoline is $8.32 a liter because Libya cut off 1.6 million barrels of oil. It caused the price of gasoline to go up everywhere across Europe. Folks, you are going to see the identical same thing happen in the United States of America. And remember, that was $8.32 a liter. In the United States of America, you're going to see 4 and 5 and maybe even $6 a gallon. Goldman Sachs warned all of their investors on yesterday. You can go look this up for yourself. And they said there is a day of rage scheduled by the Muslim Brotherhood this weekend. Now, I am not saying, oh, this I'm saying, now, I'm Lindsay Williams. I am not saying it's going to be successful. It may take a number of tries before they succeed in what they're going to do. But Goldman Sachs said the Muslim Brotherhood has scheduled a day of rage this weekend if they succeed. That's exactly what Goldman warned the people who play the future. Well, that's what she was saying three weeks ago, Lindsay. Lindsay, Lindsay, three weeks ago, you, you were the first to say, day of rage, this is going to be the trigger. I've been told Saudi Arabia is going to be cut off as well. I mean, you've been right on target. Why the day of rage? How did I know it? I knew it because they were doing it. The elite of the world are financing the Muslim Brotherhood to do what happened in Egypt, what happened in Libya, what is happening, going to happen in Saudi Arabia. It's financed by the elite themselves and the Muslim Brotherhood, Day of Rage, and Goldman Sachs says if they succeed this weekend, that I'm not saying this will happen now. I was not told by the elite that this will happen. I'm talking about Goldman Sachs said it to their investors yesterday that if the Muslim Brotherhood succeed, succeed this weekend with their day of rage, that by Monday morning we could have $200, over $200 a barrel oil. You could see gasoline at the gas pump 6 to $7 a gallon. 
Now, I didn't say that. I did not say the elite told me that. And don't you dare misquote me. All of you have misquoted me enough out there on the Internet, and I'm getting sick of it. I want you to quote what these people told me. They told me... Lindsay, the they've got... The hold on, Lindsay, 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 Lindsay. There's, <laughs> Lindsay, Lindsay, there's no reason to even respond. It's COINTELPRO. It's people living in their mother's basements that pick up the COINTELPRO. You could give them geese that lay golden eggs and they'd slit your throat. Ignore the COINTELPRO. Your record of accuracy is, is, is there and is strong. And they're still saying there's no world government. They're still saying there's no sodium fluoride in the water. They're still saying there's no dollar devaluation. They're still saying TSA doesn't put their hands down our pants. They're still saying that the federal government isn't out of control. They're still saying all of this. So who cares? Those that are going to listen are going to listen. Those that want to eat Hot Pockets in their mom's basement, let them. But I've analyzed all the things that Mr. Fromm and the other guy told you, and they've all come true except for one of them. And, and when you got one of these old guys, some of it's going to be speculation, like they won't fix that oil leak. It's under too much pressure. Well, they did fix most of it. It's still leaking today out of fractures. Uh, but, but, I mean, you know, nobody's infallible. But, I mean, if people don't like what you're saying and, you know, telling them uh, when you've been right about 95% of the time, then they don't need to listen. So that's why I say don't spend time on that, Lindsay. Let's, let's go to phone calls while we've got you here today, and we appreciate you joining us. Larry in Iowa, then Mike, Joe, Joe, Michael, and others. Larry, you're on the air with Lindsay Williams with a question or comment. V for victory, and we are the resistance. Uh, nice to talk to you guys. Uh, I, I got a uh, proposal uh, about uh, you know nationalizing our domestic oil, and you'd have to do that in conjunction probably with abolishing the Fed and getting a, uh, a panel of uh, uh, patriot economists to uh, govern that. But uh, you know, I haven't really heard that uh, talked about much. Uh, comments, Lindsay. Uh, yes. How do you default, or how do they, the elite, how they, do they default on the national debt graciously and have an excuse for doing it? I think this is basically what our caller is talking about. It, this will happen, and the only way in the world to for those key bills and Federal Reserve issues to basically default, uh, they, they'll never pay off the national debt. They know that. The interest on the national debt can't be paid anymore because countries are not coming in and buying the Federal Reserve issues. How do they default on this and get out of it graciously? Only one way. Conflict the Middle East, take crude oil prices so high, the American economy continues to disintegrate till the American dollar becomes almost worthless and you take a wheelbarrow load to the grocery store to get a uh, loaf of bread. At that point, it will be very easy to default on the national debt of $14 trillion. The T-bills that China, uh, all the uh, all producing countries of the world have bought over these years since Mr. Kissinger made the deal with them. At that point, they are both bankrupt overnight, and they realize that they have been double-crossed. It's a, it is a, a glorious way of getting out from under the national debt graciously. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Larry. Let's talk to Mike in North Carolina. You're on the air, Mike. Hey, Alex and Pastor Williams. How's everybody today? Good. Good. Uh, Pastor Williams, as a God-fearing man, I'm sure you are, um, where's the religion aspect in all of this? I mean, if people aren't awake to what's really going on in the, in the world, they're, they're dumber than a box of rocks. And unfortunately, with God, you, you, when, uh, if you book a revelation, clearly... Well, states, a lot of people claim they work? speak for God, and so you got all these denominations controlled by the World Council of Churches, and the clergy response teams run by the FEMA and the federal government telling people to love tyranny. So the church is absent in America. The real church helped found this country, and now the counterfeit church is helping kill this country. I appreciate your call, Mike. Any comments on that, Lindsay? The devil's messiah. You remember I gave this on your program back, oh, about two, three years ago. Yeah, that's their term for taking over the church. Yeah, every bit of it fits in. Because they had to destroy the God that made America great in order to be able to bring about the new world order. And you must 
you must understand what they're talking about when they say the devil's Messiah. Now, yes, I'm very upset with the ministers of America today also, but I'm also, the American people, it's so sad, all down through history, uh, man has worshipped something I have never seen, and I'm a history student, I minded in history in college, I have never seen a time when human beings seem to have no God consciousness as much as they do today. It is very disturbing to me, because if ever people should be turning... Well, to they're the empty. I mean, it's, I mean, today. they're empty. They're not tuned into things. They're just kind of like bestial zombies running around gibbering like demons. Yeah, all down through history, they've worshipped something. If it wasn't anything but a stick or a stone or the sun or the moon, they worship something. But today, people seem to have no God consciousness of worshiping anything, and it's appalling at the very time they should be turning to him for answers, Alex. Very well said, Lindsey Williams. Let's cram in one more long segment coming up. Joe in Florida, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, how are you, Alex? How good. are you, Lindsey? We're good. Hi, Joe. All right, big fan, uh, big fan of both of you guys. Thank you for uh, taking my call. I just have a question for people on fixed incomes. Okay, I know uh, I noticed you had a call from somebody who was disabled at a young age the other day, but uh, if um, you wanted to uh, invest principal and needed to hedge, you know, to protect your principal against uh, the devaluation of the dollar, but needed some type of dividends from your principal, you know, because you, you didn't count on your SSI, in the future, what would be a safe investment? Okay, we'll, we'll try to answer that on the other side. Going into a meltdown like this, there's no silver bullet, but I'll give you my view. We'll get Pastor Lindsey Williams for you. Thank you, Joe. Then we'll talk to Joe in Pennsylvania, Michael, John, Jack, and others. Stay with us. But answering Joe in Florida's question, I, I would just give the answer that you want uh, to invest in something uh, where you get a return you know, where it's a safe investment and you get a dividend. And, uh, you know, they always say hedge your bets and things, but then people never understand gold and silver. They go, well, wait, I, I buy gold and silver now, and as the dollar devalues, later I cash it in for the dollar, but those are still worthless dollars. No, they've been devalued. So let's say you buy gold at $260 an ounce uh, 11 years ago, and now it's fourteen hundred and you know thirty or whatever it's at today. Well, what's gold today? Fourteen hundred and forty. I forget the point is. So see, the dollar's devalued that much in the in eleven years, from two hundred and sixty something an ounce to fourteen hundred something an ounce. And so now you go turn that gold coin in. You bought a two hundred and sixty that ounce, and they go, here's fourteen hundred and thirty something dollars or more. And people are like, I don't understand what you're saying. That's too confusing. And I'm like, I, I don't know what else I can do for you. I, I, I just don't. I, I, I can't help then. Uh, I mean, I really can't help. And, and maybe I'm the bad man. Maybe Lindsay's bad for telling you oil would go up and it's right again. Uh, in fact, we should probably apologize right now uh, that we said buy gold and silver and they're both up over 400 um, percent. But, I mean, uh, and there are some other investments. If you got enough money, you could buy into the right farming stocks, the right commodity stocks. We told you that with the investor experts the last decade. We've been right on every front. But it's not that we're even smart. The globalists all invest in this while telling chumps to invest in everything else. <laughs> it's like telling people not to play in traffic. I mean, Lindsay, does it ever, and I'm not saying the caller's question was stupid. I just keep going back to people that still don't understand gold and silver. They're like, why do you want my fiat money if it ain't worth nothing? Well, because then we take it and we get gold ourselves. Well, then what do you cash the gold in for if it's going to be fiat? But the fiat's been devalued, so then I'll get more of it back. It freezes the inflation. They're like, huh? And, 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 and sometimes you just can't. You can lead a horse to water. You can't make him drink, Lindsay. Alex, right here on your show, InfoWars, three years ago, I'm sure that your producer can go back and pull it up if he wants to. I said that I had just been on the phone with my elitist friend, and I was exasperated. I look at my own son and my wife and my family, and I say, how can I provide for them? This man had told me what they were going to do, how the price was going up from 147 to 50, how it was going to stay there for two and a half years, how it would go back up again. He did not tell me about the Middle East crisis right now until later. And at the time, I said, what can I do? I said, my family, 
Well, what do I do? He said to me, he said, Chaplain, there is only one way that you can spare your assets. And he said, that is our currency. And Alex, you'll remember me saying that. He said, it is our currency. I asked him the question. I said, what is your currency? He said, our currency is gold and silver. He said, if it's written on a piece of paper, it's worth the paper it's written on. And I came back on your show three years ago, and I said, when you could buy gold for $700 an ounce, I begged with you. I pleaded with you. I got it, did everything but got on my knees and cried and asked you to go and buy gold at $700 an ounce. And, and I want you to apologize right now, and I'm going to apologize. I'm sorry I told people to buy it at 260 I'm sorry I told people to buy silver at, at, at $5, and now it's at 35 Lindsay, you're bad for telling the truth and being right. I'm bad. We're bad. The government That's lying right. to people on purpose, they're good. And Alex is their currency. This is what no, they you're, you're, you're bad, and I'm bad, and, 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 and we're evil. So. I mean, and so as a result, I said it down your show. Today it's 1400 yep, And folks, yep, I'm you're telling evil. you where it's going from here. Are you listening? Please. I'm, I'm going to apologize for this a year from now, as we're having to do right now. I'm going to tell you where they have told me it's going. It is going to two and $3,000 an ounce for gold. Mark my words. Put it down beside your calendar. Don't you call me a prophet. You say that Mr. Williams' elite friend told him. And why are they going to take it there? There's a reason why. This is just as important as the fact it's going there. Because the dollar will be dead. I didn't say non-existent. Dead by the end of 2012. And in order to bring in a new world currency. You've heard Alex Jones talk about this for years, folks. Please believe every word you're hearing him say on InfoWars. Listen to him every day and don't miss a word of it. Whenever they come out with a new world currency, it will be backed by gold. They cannot do it at $1,000 an ounce or $250 an ounce. They've got to do it at three to $4,000 an ounce. And you take the gold that Alex and I have begged you to buy for the last three years, turn around, and it'll be worth three to $4,000 an ounce. Buy the new world currency. And we'll be bad guys again. We'll be evil we're bad we're bad for why is it in this sick demonic world now though that telling the truth and being right is bad when you're wrong you're hailed it's like oh you know these guys on tv keep lying to me and, and giving me bad info but they're wearing fancy suits with teleprompters but then when you're right it's bad well, Alex, you've been right. You've been right over the years. I followed you before you ever even knew me. And I, 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 what you've said has come true exactly as you have said it. Uh, you got yours from many different sources. I received mine from the elite only, two of them in particular, who over these years have been willing to give me this information. And then, of course, the latest one who said, I'm too old to care. Just go and tell the world everything. And, Alex, at that point, I pulled out all the stops and told them everything, and, and I haven't ceased doing it. I, I'm not going to go into it either, because you've got to know what's going on. You do not have to lose sleep over this. You do not need to look for black helicopters and look behind bushes. If you'll take the advice of the elite, because they're the ones that are doing it, and do what would seem right to do in light of what they're going to do, you can spare yourself heartache and pain in light of what's about to happen, what the inevitable is, Alex. Absolutely. I want to go back to the calls. And, of course, I was being sarcastic earlier. We should be appreciated and thanked, and we are by many people. It's just that the gibbering masses who will not take our advice become more enraged as we become more and more uh, you know, confirmed, as everything we talk about becomes more and more certified and bona fide. They, they become more fearful and they say, it's your fault the economy's imploding. You destroyed confidence. Uh, or no, gold and silver isn't a good investment. Or you didn't say oil was going to go up. It's not true. And it's, I mean, I've run into this with, with more distant family at family reunions and events. I'll see cousins and people, uh, or, you know, some of my in-laws family. And I'll, I'll tell them, uh, remember six, seven years ago at, 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 at the birthday party, I said, buy gold, and it was 400 bucks an ounce then. And they go, yeah, I know, but, you know, what are you, a financial planner? You advise? And I go, well, you know, now it's gone up 300, 400 bucks. Yeah, it's the best. And, but hold on, hold on. And then I saw them again about a year ago, and I said, well, it was 300 
and now it's you know almost fourteen hundred. And I said, uh, and they thought I was showing off to put them down, and laughed at me and said I basically had no financial acumen. And I said, but wait, I was right. I'm trying to tell you this to help you, not to show off, you stupid yuppie. You know, I mean, it's like it's like they're drowning out there in the water. And you try to throw them a, a life raft, and they stab it with daggers and go, no, don't show off, ah, and just stab, stab. It's like, it, it's, it's like they want to be run over. The people want to lose. They want to fail. Their religion is about being weak. I don't know. What do you call that? The greatest financial planner on the face of this earth, Alex, is the elite. All you got to do is listen to them. And I've written three books trying to explain the mindset of these people. All three of them are out of print now. Maybe I should put all three of them back in print again. When you understand new world order from Daddy Bush, when you understand a thousand points of light from Daddy Bush, you'll be able to know exactly what to do. Listen to the elite. I listen to my friends. And when they said that gold was the only thing I could spare my assets in, I invested in gold and silver. Let me say emphatically right now, I do not sell gold and silver. You couldn't buy a penny from me if you tried to. Alex has people on his show who tell you where to go and buy it from. All I'm trying to do is tell you the truth so you can spare your dinner table in coming days, Alex. Well, to be clear, I sure sell gold and silver. And I try to get folks to buy firearms, too, even though I don't sell firearms. We need some sponsors, by the way, good firearms manufacturers. Uh, I mean, I'm, I mean, I promote what I believe in because I sleep good at night. And, and I hope folks call Midas Resources and take advantage of those three silver dollars, three of my best-selling films, and free shipping for $110. That's about a $65 uh, value. You can't beat it. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. Don't screw around. Don't wait. Let's go back to the calls. Uh, but, uh, Joe, other investments for you? Look, I, I don't know your personal standing or you know the, the lay of your financial landscape, so I can't give you advice. I just tell you what I would do, and uh, it's real simple. Uh, let's go ahead, and I would buy bullion, gold, and silver, and then you know hide it big time. Well, let's talk to Joe in Pennsylvania. Joe, you're on the air. Welcome. Hey, Alex. Uh, I feel sorry for you. Um, maybe if you use the paper and crayon and use smaller words, that could help. Um, I, I got my, uh, my book, my DVDs and my four gold or silver coins from Midas Resources, uh, when it was $27 an ounce and, uh, but anyway, uh, and now it's 35 an ounce. I apologize. You must have bought that a week or two ago and you've made a huge profit. I'm sorry, Joe. Well, your, your apologies. No, tell me I, I'm bad right now. I'm scum. You're horrible for making me money. Okay. Okay. I apologize. You're horrible. You're horrible. Um, but for Mr. Williams, uh, it's an honor to talk to you, and you answered part of my question while I was listening. But uh, I, I'm going back to when uh, Kissinger made the deal with the Middle East about selling the oil and the, and the dollars and that they would have to buy a certain amount of our bonds. And then I was listening uh, another time when you were talking with Alex, and, and he said that... Uh, you're, they're going to open up the North Slope in Alaska and other oil fields that we have in this country. Now, my question is this. Do you think that the elite, because the Middle East said, you know what, we're not going to sell in dollars anymore, we're going to get out of this, that they had this planned all along, and they're kind of like spanking the Middle East on the rear end, saying this is what you get for messing with us? Um, and my next question after that was, as far as investing, what do you think about investing in oil futures now, knowing that it's going to go up to make money? Well, it's so it's detailed and complex. I'm sorry, go ahead, Lindsay. If it's written on a piece of paper, it's worth the paper it's written on. And he stressed that to me over and over and over and over. And I asked you about it many times. He said, Chaplain, if it's written on a piece of paper, it's worth the paper it's written on. As far as they're planning all of this is concerned, I think my record of predictions based on what they've told me, shows that they have planned this in advance. They knew everything they were going to do two, three, four, and five years in advance. Yeah, they're planning a complete meltdown 
That's why they're preparing foreign troops. It doesn't mean they'll do it. It doesn't mean they'll go all the way. But on this continuum of force, we know they're going to project it downfield. We don't know if they're going to get 20 yards, 50 yards, 100 yards, or how much force they want to use on the lever. They don't want to blow their race car engine. But the point is, they're ready and committed to their plan with absolute military occupation, uh, total destruction of all currency, and total enslavement. I mean, that's on the table. Uh, 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 Pastor Williams? It's all on the debt. You're exactly right. They have to find a gracious manner in order to default on this debt so that the American people will not accuse them of all the problems that they've created. And they're going to do it. And this is what I give in my very latest DVD series, The Middle East, The Rest of the Crisis. I tell the intricate details of how they're doing all of this. So, Alex, yes, you're exactly right. They have to find a way to do this, but, and they will succeed. I'm not saying that the Muslim Brotherhood this weekend will do everything they say they're going to do in Saudi Arabia. But give them time, and they will, because they're the ones. They're well, they're financed by they're financed by MI6 and Soros on record. Here's the Economist. Just as the world economy was recovering, it was never recovering. They, uh, it shows the globe with an oil barrel as a bomb with a fuse on it, about to blow the planet up. And I've already seen, and I predicted this a few months ago, but now you see them doing it because you know their next play when you study them. They're already scapegoating the globe financial meltdown on what's happening in the Middle East, exactly what you said four and a half, five months ago, that they would destroy the Arabs because they're the biggest owner in the aggregate of the debt, thus mortally wounding the dollar. That's why the Wall Street Journal came out on Monday and said the end of the dollar is here. In fact, let me pull out that article. They said the end of the dollar is nigh and promoted it like it was a good deal. They are bringing in the chaos to then bring in their order. It is their stratagem, and people ignore that at their peril. Joe, I appreciate your call. We're going to keep Lindsay five minutes in the next hour. Then Aaron Dykes for a segment or two with information that, again, dovetails with all of this with the absolute treason, brazen mafia takeover of the coal-powered plants because they're not just going to cut off the oil from the Middle East. They want to shut down all their competition, rape us more financially. You think your power bill doubling and on average the last two years of Obama shutting down power plants is anything? The head of the Energy Department says they're going to shut down massive amounts. Anybody who isn't George Soros or General Electric running the White House is over. It is over. These people are mafia. They are brutal. And then when the poor people are uh, starving in the streets, they'll turn them loose on the general public and demand total socialism to feed chicken feed to the starving, unwashed masses who will then become their brown shirt TSA goons who will slit your family's throat with pleasure. I'm not trying to scare you. This is the facts. If you want the Middle East, the rest of the story, it's available at prophecyclub.com. The new three DVD set that Lindsay's laid out, now shipping out. The folks finally got it done. Uh, and uh, give them the number if they want to call and get it, Lindsay. The first one will be shipped out on Friday. Not one has been shipped yet. It turned out to be three hours instead of one. You who purchased a number of weeks ago, you're going to get three DVDs instead of two. We couldn't do it any shorter. you got to give the number out, Lindsay. Days. We're about to hit the, the break. Is 888 799 6111, where I get six operators standing Stay by. there, stay there. Uh, but continuing, here's some of the new news at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Uh, again, integrating in with exactly uh, what Lindsay was just talking about. Day of rage, Saudi Arabia in veiled threat to the United States as the world braces itself for Saudi Arabia's day of rage uh, on Friday, which many fear could be the spark that sends oil prices soaring beyond $200 a barrel mark. Saudi Foreign Minister Prince Saad al-Faisal issued a veiled threat to the United States, warning that the kingdom was prepared to cut foreign fingers in the event of any outside interference. See, Saudi Arabia now is figuring out they're being double-crossed because they're about to have their T-bills devalued. The Day of Rage uh, has been organized by Saudi use using Facebook. It's all CIA-run. Again, it's the globalists turning on their old puppets. Soros says communist Chinese model of order may become the envy of the world. Western democracies provide less successful leadership than China. That's more David Rockefeller propaganda. These people are open tyrannous maximus, maximum tyrants. I am. These people are a bunch of baby Stalin, baby Hitlers trying to get up on their legs, man. 
stop licking their boots as they put in TSA body scanners nationwide and try to stick their hands down our pants. They're trying to break our will. Lindsey Williams, looking at this, I mean, you said it, the Middle East four and a half months ago, the trigger for the global meltdown, their scapegoat, and now the Economist, Bilderberg Group publication, saying the exact same thing, Lindsey. Yes, and one of these days, after they have told you what they're doing, that buzzword, as Alec has just mentioned, tells you everything they're going to do, and then they'll turn around a few months from now, after they've already done it, and say, we told you so, why didn't you listen? Alex, I, why don't people sit up and listen to what these people... You are going to be paying 6 7 and $8 a gallon of the gas pump. That'll be your fault for warning them. The bankers love them. The government's going to help them. Michael Moore cares. And we're going to, before you leave us the next time, we're going to give that number out again. But right now, let's jam these calls in. Michael in Texas, you're on the air. Quick question, sir. Yes, question and a quick comment. Hey, gentlemen, don't feel bad about what you're doing. Uh, I'm almost embarrassed quoting a scripture with uh, Lindsay here. Isaiah, the prophet, in chapter uh, 30, verse 10, he threw his hands up in the air because he was trying to warn the people, and all they would do is come back to him and say, tell us illusions, tell us smooth things, tell us what we want to hear. This is human nature, gentlemen, so don't feel bad. You're, you're warning the people, and the ones that listen have listened. I, I just placed another order with... Uh, Ted Anderson's brother over at Midas Resources for Silver. I've been reading uh, Porter Stansberry's um, uh, publications for years. I, I just bought another membership at Front Sight to get my firearms training. The people who you're trying to warn, they're listening, so don't feel bad. Um, this is just human nature. It's, it, people have always been like this, and uh, I don't understand it myself. No, they like to, some of them more. like to lose. Do you have a question real quick? Because we're almost out of time. i got to get to other callers. Uh, do you have any questions for Lindsay? Yeah, quick question. I understand, uh, Pastor, that the, the, we're going to try to double-cross, or we're going to double-cross Saudi Arabia. Now, they don't have a military to respond. We're their muscle in the Middle East. We're their protector as far as the military is concerned. The thing I'm worried about is China. We owe them a lot of money. And uh, they just brought a submarine up off of California and in a uh, saber-rattling move launched a missile. Yeah. How are we going to double-cross China and think we're going to get away with it? Well, the double cross is going to be the default on the national debt. This has to happen because Washington knows they can't pay it off. And now the nations aren't showing up to buy the T-bills and the Federal Reserve issues. And as a result, last week, I mean, this is startling, as of last week, the Federal Reserve surpassed China as the largest holder of United States debt. I mean, Mr. Fromm told Yeah, the me bankers are getting ready to cheat all the people that invested with them. Stay with us. John in Texas, you're on the air with Pastor Lindsey Williams. Go ahead. Hey, Alex, how you doing? Oh, just sitting uh, here, you know, tracking the globalists. What's on your mind? That's a good thing. Uh, I just, just want to comment and uh, just on what's being talked about is something I found out and uh, was very interesting is that uh, there's a person here locally that uh, has a friend that lives in China, the country of China. And uh, he's like a trends forecaster. He's like a Gerald Salente. Okay, what, what's he and, saying? Uh, he's saying he's crunching the numbers. He's doing his analysis. And uh, what he's uh, telling uh, this person here locally that uh, things are going to start to come unraveled here in August. So it's just a word of the wise. And, Lindsay, I know you said before in the past, get your family ready, get your food ready, get your water, gas probably, you know, pull money out of an ATM, get it out of the bank, you know, before things do get bad. But that's the information that we're getting from this man in China. And he said that uh, things will start to come unraveled here in August. So I wanted to just throw that out. And that's just, we're talking five, five and a half months. Well, notice they've been telling us that the recovery's been great in the last two years, even though we're in a depression. Uh, and now they're telling us, oh, the Arabs, it's going to cause a meltdown. Appreciate your call, John. Uh, any comments on what John said, Lindsay? I was given these exact words, and I'll quote them word for word, verbatim. I said it on Alex Jones' show about two years ago. He said to me, he said, China is the big one. Alex, you'll remember me saying that on your show. He went on to explain what's going to happen with China, how the Daddy Bush brought them out from the closed society of many years ago, and they moved our industry abroad. And he used the expression and went on to explain to me what's going to happen. China is the big one, Alex. Absolutely. Let's try to jam in some more calls here. Let's talk to Jack in Michigan. You're on the air with Pastor Lindsey Williams. 
<clears throat> yes, uh, Pastor Williams, I did read your book, The Energy Non-Crisis, and my question is, which government agency told the Alaska Pipeline to only build two pipelines instead of 12? That's my first question. And the uh, second one is, um, the uh, you, you wrote another book called Where is the Food, uh, your first book. Can you get this, there's still a copy of that book somewhere? No, it's out of print. Uh, all of those books are presently out of print. Let me ask, answer your question. First of all, by, one day I was with one of these elitists. We had spent quite some time together that day riding around the North Slope. And I asked him, I said, uh, I said, look at all these ecologists out here. And I said, they're costing you thousands of dollars of trying to produce this oil pipeline. I said, well, I understand that you actually give money to support them, the Sierra Club and Greenpeace and all the rest of them. He said, Chaplain, we give to the Democratic Party, we give to the Republican Party, we give to Greenpeace, we give to Sierra Club. He said, we give every one of them big amounts every year. He said, we do it because regardless of who gets in, Democrats or Republicans, we can control the whole thing on either side. Now, you say, who did what they did that day? I'll tell you who did it. The oil companies wanted to see to it that oil was not given to the American people until they took it to $200 a barrel. Yeah, the oil companies did it, and the government backs it up with the fake environmental movements that are paid for by the oil companies on record to shut down their competition. I was utterly amazed when this man told me how they do these things, because remember, I've been a pastor for 12 years, I was brought up in a wonderful, godly home, yeah. and all of a sudden to hear people talk about supporting both sides so they can totally control them, well, all they did was, <laughs> they, had, they had backed the president in the previous That's election. what they did. Lindsay, uh, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to talk to you again very, very soon. Uh, thank you so much.